The programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Well, hello. <laughs> Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it's Friday, and we're off to the races. We're off to the races already, and uh, we're going to quit. We have, actually have a guest in our audience, uh, actually at the desk, but we're not going to introduce the desk yet because it's going to be rather interesting to see what happens when this desk comes on board because there's a lot of accusations flying a around. mystery guest. Yeah, and I think they're uh, very uh, founded. Well, let's uh, address some of this... Uh, new hate that's uh, going around. And it's called Page of Throw Compliance. Trash, 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 no. trash, trash. We never stop talking the, about the, trash. The, 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 the word that we can never, ever get out of our vocabulary. No, I, it's, it's terrible. And here's the worst part about it. They've actually started going out. They were in my neighborhood yesterday, I guess. You think, how long have we had purple bags and how long have we been hearing about compliance and that you know, a, you know, a day late and a dollar short, and they wonder why people don't don't care. It's well, like, here's here's the kicker. Okay, they're going around, they're opening the bins, they're digging through them. If you, look, I think, if you go to the uh, the Pravda, the Herald News website, you'll see pictures of the new trash enforcement officer, um, and he's he's upset because I, I guess he's not upset. He's just telling people he's doing his job. Does but, he have a uniform and a badge or anything yeah, like that? Uh, not in the pictures I saw, but okay. hey, you Under never 20. know. But the new one's name is D'Souza, and, you know, Denmead, who's been doing this job alone for a while, has, has also been out there. But um, since May, Denmead issued 204 citations. We spoke about this a few weeks ago. I'm not going to get into it. Only nine of them have been paid. Lots of them get dismissed by the housing court because it's a yeah. first-time infraction. And you know, now Denmead and D'Souza, they go around the city. And they open them up, and they look in, and they move a purple bag, and they see a white bag underneath, and they write a citation. Well, Mr. D'Souza and Mr. Denmead, I don't know if you know your job or not, but I'm going to tell our viewers what they need to do, okay? And you know what? You can thank Linda Pereira for this, because under Chapter 62, Section, oh, God, what is this? Da -da 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 -da. Uh, section 5. Okay, so that's Chapter 62, Section 5 of the City Ordinances. And I'm only going to get down to the last line. All fines <laughs> for noncompliance of Chapter 62 shall be credited to the Sanitation Enterprise Fund. Yes, but guess what? They can only find the generator of the trash. That's it. The director and its authorities... And his authorized agents, including but not limited to litter enforcement officers, shall have the authority to enforce the provisions of ordinance as detailed in Chapter 26, Environmental Chapter 62, Solid Waste, and Sections 2 through 1021 through 2 1025 of Chapter 2, Administration. As said, Section relates to Chapter 26 and 62. Enforcement shall only be against the generator of the trash, which means. Mr. Denmead, Mr. D'Souza, you actually have to open those bags in violation and fish through them and then find the proof of who generated the trash. Just a picture of, because this is what was said by, you know, litter uh, enforcement officer D'Souza, they move the bag and they take a picture of it and they take a picture of the serial number on the bin. Did they pick the bag up or did they leave it? I, I, they must, I, don't, I have no idea. They didn't talk about that. But, you know, the thing is, is that if you're not going to use purple bags pursuant to that ordinance that Linda Pereira created, only the generator of the trash can be fined. Just make sure there's nothing in your trash that identifies your address or you. And you brought up a very good point. Does it truly go into the Sanitation Enterprise Fund? I have no all, idea where it All goes. nine fines. All fines go into the general fund. <laughs> all nine. Yeah. All nine. All nine fines. All nine fines. Yeah, you well. know, they go into the they go into the general fund. Now, the problem that I have with this is that they quoted them that they have 167 unpaid fines. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, obviously, I think this, I've seen 167 violations just driving around in one day. Well, that's so exactly what uh, D'Souza said. He says you can go down some streets and, you know, there are absolutely no violations. You go down other streets and that's all you see is violations. You know, this has become the biggest joke yeah. in the Commonwealth. Maybe the mayor should get his head out of his derriere, okay, and see that this project is not working. Now, he's supported this project since it was shoved down the people's throats way yeah. back when. And, you know, this is another example of, of government inefficiency. You know, it got shoved down people's throat. It went before... Uh, it went before public health, not the city council, it, you know, and, you know, they, they rammed this down everybody's throat. They made all kinds of uh, projections on how much they, it was going to make. They've never realized those projections. There's, ne that, you know, and now how many years later? What, two mayors later? Two, yeah. Two mayors, three mayors later, actually, if we count him. Yep. Uh, three mayors later, they're, be they're finally beginning enforcement. You know, if, if, if businesses didn't collect their money the way the city is, everybody would be bankrupt. But guess who takes it on the chin? We, the taxpayers, because the only reason they're, getting, they're going crazy now is, just like I hear, so you all know, even though you should, and I always do, if someone jumps in a crosswalk, stop, because there's a new sting operation that they're, they're, they're giving tickets out for people who, who don't allow pedestrians in a, a, a crosswalk to right away. And uh, it's kind of like a, a, the other sting operations. Anytime they start doing stuff like this, you know they're desperate for money. So I'm going to give them a, a little hint. Rather than doing that, and then you're jeopardizing the life of whoever the guy is that jumps into the crosswalk in this city the way most of these people drive. <laughs> why don't you just stop at every, every, why don't you put a police car on a corner, like in Ellsbury Street. Every time I leave Bristol Community College and I drive down to the end of Ellsbury Street, Ellsbury and President Avenue, there's always a car parked right in the middle of the crosswalk at the stoplight. That's, you're not supposed to be there. There's a stop line. They're in the middle of the crosswalk. That's a finable offense. Just as how many people do you see every single day take a right where it says no right turn? How or many better, people, or how, better, <laughs> or honestly better, better than that, because that always gets me too, is when the sign says that you can take a right turn and they sit there. And yeah. they wonder why traffic gets backed up and people are blowing the horn at them. Well, because they're that. too stupid to read. And even if you do take a right turn, it's not legal if you don't stop for it. You're exactly. supposed to stop. You know, how many people that even though th th there's no sign, don't, you know, don't make a right turn, go flying around the corner without, without any hesitation. So, you know, there's a lot of, th there are a lot of traffic infractions, you know, without trying to make a sting operation. This is like looking for Johns on a, on a uh, you know, on a sex sting. That's but why I keep my $20 bills out of my, my underwear. <laughs> but, you know, again, <laughs> the city's desperate for money. Yes. You know, and, and now they're going to, now the compliance. And how many compliance officers were we supposed to have? Well, initially we had a grant for four compliance officers, which I never saw, but the grant... That's right. Was, I'm looking for accountability. I bet to the you grant. we spent the money on a grant. Yeah, well, they did. And now they got another grant for four more compliance officers, but they only have two. That's so right. I want to know where this money went because, according to Kathy Ann, it got exhausted almost as soon as they got it. Uh, is that like the grant money we got for the mattresses? And, yeah. and we got a, a raise and we in increased, fees? Yeah, we increased the fee. Yeah, exactly. We got a grant to get rid of mattresses. We increased the fee. So, so I want all our viewers to remember if you get a ticket or a violation, for not using a purple bag, appeal it. Appeal every single ticket. Appeal them all. Because odds are the court's going to throw them out anyhow. That's the first thing. And secondly, if they can't prove that you generated that trash, they can't find you. But what they're doing is they're actually writing the tickets on site. And they have to actually produce the evidence. They're taking a picture of the bags and your serial number. But that doesn't mean they've got the evidence. Because remember, the preponderance of evidence is going to be on them by a reasonable doubt. So remember that. Now we get into some interesting stuff. According to reports, a local neighborhood leader was, it, was 
or an attempt was made to intimidate a local neighborhood leader. Coerce, Coerce, intimidate. Whatever the case may be. Um, and comments were made which were absolutely unacceptable. And one of the things that I find is that the administration always has with them, walking around with them side by side, is Jen Andrade to everything. Every meeting, every event, they walk almost arm in arm. And I think we're going to get into that right now. And so our special guest to bring out all the facts and not just what I can recall or I have notes on is this neighborhood leader who is Carlos Siza. Oh, look! <laughs> what a surprise. Huh? And no what bow tie. Surprise. You can tell he's been intimidated. What he doesn't have surprise. a bow tie on. No bow tie this week. So, Carlos, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were ambushed by Monica Souza and she arranged for a meeting without telling you with the mayor and with Jen Andrade. Is that correct? Yes, I had scheduled a meeting with Monica to go over some projects that the neighborhood always uh, on the past been having support of the city. Does a matter what is my position uh, with the mayor at the time. We always had uh, a very good um, working relationship. And that meeting was made and I was surprised that um, without announcing uh, that the mayor was gonna just walk in. And that's exactly what happened. Um, he visited my office um, when I was meeting with Monica and the intent, even if it was a good intention, made the situation even worse. Because number one, I was not, not prepared to receive the mayor. Um, and number two is that, you know me, I told them what, I, what my feelings was and all my worries was, and, and he was not happy. Well, on the um, supposedly me running for office, uh, threats, I'm going to put it aside because, um, like everybody knows, I'm not intending. But I want to advise the future candidates that if you think that national elections was dirty, wait for next year's election, city elections. Because if you, if you not pay, if you, you have a parking ticket that it was not paid, you know, that's going to go against you if you're running for office next next uh, election it's going to be a very dirty election it's going to be not about the facts what i accomplished in two years and what i'm planning to do on the next two years but it's going to be on the facts that you uh, own the city of parking tickets and so you're a bad citizen but but carlos I yeah mean, but <laughs> I, I you know I, and i understand what you're saying carlos but i i don't understand how they that tactic could be used by the current mayor, he forgave uh, one of his key supporters, uh, owed the city a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And that debt was forgiven or paid off or, you know, the, that jury's still out on that. And uh, now he is an upstanding member of this community on all kinds of boards. And he has all kind, and he's, and he's getting CDA money to put windows in. And he's, you know, he's putting in for all kinds of grants and he's... He, now he's looked upon as one of the pillars of the community, and he's building up the community. Yet, for a while there, he wasn't paying. He wasn't paying a lot of his bills, and uh, so you know, so on that part, forgi you know, forgiveness is is. It, I guess only the Lord can forgive or Jaisal if you give him money. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks so. Well, his initials are JC. Thanks God, I, I always put a quarter when Good I go point. when I go there, and I did got a couple of tickets but I went and paid them twenty dollars <laughs> a piece so but um, my question really is not and 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 I'm going to forget about you know if you run for office I still going to win because I've been doing everything that the Kinda people asked me to do he? and all of that you know so I, I, I mean I, I even going to ignore that because like everybody knows, I, at this point, I don't have intentions. I think he's got the Hillary syndrome. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. <laughs> now, my concern is the fact that we do have some projects that we always have the support of the city. And was told very clear to me, I can do those projects without going through you. 
I can go around you and do those projects that the neighborhood needs. I mean, those projects, um, they don't even know what I'm talking about. They don't have contacts. They don't have information on projects. They don't have anything. So um, they can do it, yes. And I told them, you, I can provide you the information. You can do it. I'm not doing it to make my name stamp on the project. I just want the project to be done to benefit the voters that elect you. Because I know they voted for you to put you in office. That's exactly uh, the terms that I, that I told them. But um, I, I'm just afraid that you know, that's going to happen. And we, um, the Flints, probably going into the next year, we do have four or five uh, uh, community events that we have the support of the city that probably, probably I'm going to have to take them out of um, and uh, out of the agenda and not make them next year. So instead of 64, we will go with 60 events next year. But um, I, I just want the, the people to know, uh, to know that. On top of that, what I was informed was that uh, next year, all the nonprofit organizations that want to do events on the city is going to have to pick up the bills from cleaning after the events, from um, uh, paying all the fees and uh, and all of that and and when I was told being told that the only thing on my head that I could think is if the city collects the fees out of the Holy Ghost feast probably it's enough to pay for every event that's going to happen on this city for free yeah well we wa I want to get to the threats you, there was uh, I heard that you were threatened so leave me can you tell me what you were threatened I talk I, I I took that as a threat and and and, and I uh, then with another conversation with Monica I I explained to her and and I could understand the way that she was trying she knew that me and the mayor we were not going you know straight face to face and she tried to put us on the same room um, and try to, to work out, okay? Um, but the way the process that it was used and the way it was done, I mean, uh, I think made it, made it worse. And the threats that I think, just for the fact that he will show up without uh, me knowing, to me, I, I can take that as a threat. Yeah. And then the conversation that went on, you know, uh, and it was all about threats. You know, um, if you run for office, I, draw, I want you to know that I'm going to still win. How did you uh, want me to help the neighborhoods and pay for stuff on the neighborhoods when you go around and you talk bad about me and, 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 and you're running for my office? So all of that, I, I mean, I can, I can take, take that as a threat because, you know, he's, he's kind of intimidating me with, yeah. with, with the words. You know what I'm saying? You know, I well, but I guess, in, I guess in his perception, what he's doing is campaigning. He's already explaining to you. Yeah. And I got to tell you, if he said he's done everything that the, the people want, I didn't ask him to raise my taxes. No, no. I didn't ask him to raise my water fees. I didn't ask him to give all these tips to people and put it into my tax rate. I didn't ask him to, to make my life more expensive in this city and get absolutely nothing for it. I didn't ask him to, to, to give everybody in his staff a pay raise and hire all kinds of people. And to get to, to, to the, the neighborhood liaison officer, see this point to me proves why and, and basically shows why I, dis I disagreed with that position from the get-go. You, you have someone who is the mayor put her in there. That's right. Her allegiances are to the mayor. She brings the mayor in because she's not a liaison between neighborhoods and the mayor. She is not a neutral party that tries to work as a liaison and look up the definition, you know, to attempt to create a bridge between the city government right. and, and the neighborhood associations. She's a shill for the mayor. She brought the mayor in to try to make you do nicey nice with the mayor and support him in the, in the upcoming election. That's her job. She's with the mayor ninety percent of the time. As far as I'm concerned, she she makes Perry Long look like a you know, look like a star. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, she spends more time campaigning and doing campaign work for the mayor than she does. Uh, the neighborhoods and when she's working on a neighborhood she's working on it from the perspective that she's trying to get the mayor 
involved so everybody will support him. This is, you know, she's created a political what I, position. What I told him was that I never said that he's, that he's not a good person. What I say is that I don't agree, for example, the streetscapes from the very beginning. So I was told that, um, I was told that they're gonna go to the Flint and the Flint business and tell everybody that the project's gonna be removed from the streetscapes because I don't agree with it. That was the last word about the streetscapes for the Flint. When I was trying to explain to him and to them was that was never a project for, for Pleasant uh, or for Flint on that project. Was a loan order, was a loan through the CDA agency that was going to be applied and not guaranteed, but it was introduced into that, into that project, which now that I went in front of the city council and I gave my opinion that I don't agree with, okay, um, is going to get removed. And I'm going to be blamed because now they're going to go to the Flint and they're going to tell the Flint residents and the Flint business that uh, we removed the project from the Flint because Carlos don't agree with the project. Well, you know, Carlos, that, that's another form of, of a threat. But let, let's get into a couple of issues real quick because we only got about seven minutes left in the show. So first off, Monica Souza, I received an anonymous email and it's not even an email, it's an actual printed letter. And, it, and, and the only identifier on it was some crazy thing. But it went to various state and federal agencies saying that Monica has been reprimanded or has been advised that she's operating outside of the parameters of her job description, which is governed by housing and urban development, more than once in, in City Hall at meetings. The content of this letter was very clearly somebody who has been present in these meetings. Now, there's also in this letter some question about her acting as a political campaign chair, selling tickets, collecting money, whatever the case may be. Here's a couple of, th let, let's do the tree. Monica Souza is related to Jen Andrade. Jen Andrade is the mayor's political campaign treasurer now, as well as campaign manager. Her husband is a doctor who is a primary investor in one of the marijuana companies that are trying to locate in Fall River. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but did they not insinuate or make reference to the fact that they believe that your support for an opposing marijuana company was paid for? Well, uh, one of the companies, the first company that approached us for support uh, came in front of the board and uh, the board had a questions uh, about them and everything. And then we, uh, we gave them a lot of support. When we gave the letter of support to this company, we didn't know that the mayor already had given a lot of support to uh, this doctor. Um, what, I mean, nobody knew about it. Crowley. Uh, Crowley. And, and, and we gave him a lot of support. Then they said, you know, we really want to help the neighborhood. We want, and they give a donation to, uh, to the neighborhood. They give us a, a donation, and they've been very good to us, even paying for fruits and, and everything for, for our, pond, for, for our um, soap kitchen. But um, then last week, uh, the two weeks ago, I got approached by uh, City Council Pam about a company from Brockton that wants to come and buy the Banif building, the, the Portuguese bank on Pleasant Street, if we will be able to give them a lot of support. And I said, why not? I mean, we want to welcome everybody. We're not going to sell just to one. It was not on our contract. Even they've been good to us, but on our contract, it's not in there saying that we're going to only support you. And, and I was accused to, to, how did you want all these all this companies on, on Pleasant Street? Well, it's not up to me to give them the license. They're only coming for support, a, a lot of support. And I don't care if it's 20 companies that comes looking for a lot of support. We want to be the same. We want to treat them equal. Whoever's going to make it into the state and, and get out of there with the license, good for them. But I, I, I'm not in a position to refuse a lot of support you know, if I want to treat them all the same. 
So now I'm being accused because I already give a letter of support to one that I'm not supposed to give a letter to support to nobody else. And that's not how we run. We support everybody the same. Now, if I want to pick whoever I want to open the business, then I'm going to fall into that game. So, you know, I, I, I only want to support this one. But that's not, that's not our case. And this is going to come into ordinance because uh, City Councilor Pam LeBeau already put that in ordinance. It's going to come out on the third. And, you know, it's going to, a lot of information is going to come out because a lot of things being done and, and said uh, to these companies and promised that, that the, the administration is not falling up. And that's when now the company is getting mad. This company is already to open in two months bringing $1.3 million into the city. That's the new the company, next, correct? Exactly. That's the one that right wants to buy now, Banff Bank. At the, next, at the next fiscal year, right. $1.3 million. And the mayor refuses to give them the letter because they're going to open first then the letter of the company that he actually wants to bring to town. Which would be so, Crowley's company, which, by the way, Crowley's company's main investor is Dr. Andrade, the mayor's treasurer's husband, and that's where, now, now you see how you start tracking the money? You see how you start tracking the money? Because as a matter of fact, I believe Dr. Andrade had to meet with the Board of Licensure on Medicine because there is a prohibition about doctors being investors or something. I think that's since changed. Uh, he did walk away from that with, with no censure or anything. They found that there was no difficulty. But he is a primary investor in this company that the mayor is supporting to give the license to. Follow the money, people. Follow the money. Uh, now. Uh, Chip is too quiet. I don't like this. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, no, I'm listening. Look, I mean, this is politics as usual. The mayor's got an in. There's a business coming in that he wants to get in because obviously his campaign manager slash treasurer slash whatever, anything she wants, obviously, any position she wants, uh, her husband is involved in a business. This is the way politics works. This is not the way the average person works. We want, we, you know, the, the, the reality is Fall River needs an infusion of any kind of money it can. The business that's going to do the most for Fall River is the business that we should bring in. Exactly. The business that will do the, the most to impact this depressed economy should be the business that we bring in. But here's the kicker. And this that's not the way they do it right. politically. And now, that's the re it's like Kenny Fiola saying that there's a thousand jobs <laughs> at there and there's another thousand six hundred. Their their numbers are crap. Yep. And and the problem is that you know, you look at things as, okay, businesses are coming in, they're bringing money in, this is what we, we need to do. They look at it, hey, my my one of my campaign people's relative is gonna make money on this deal, so anybody I'm gonna make sure he gets it. And I don't care if he's not going to be as effective or bringing as much money. Therein lies the problem in this city. There's way too much inbred Jed stuff, and it's even worse now with this guy. So, I'm, I, you know, I'm keeping quiet because, uh, you know, I'm not going to keep quiet on the thing. There are all kinds of issues. But the fact is, threats not, and not enough time. Threats and intimidation are all part of this administration. Right. If you don't support them, you're in trouble. Period. But, you know, the thing is, is that this new company, what's the name of this company that wants to buy the Banff Bank? The bank is in good health. In good health. They're <laughs> yeah, ready to go that's forward. That's a nice title. Yeah, they're ready to go forward right away. That means $1.3 million right away. Hey, Mr. Mayor. That's more than the, the, the purple bags. The purple uh, bags don't generate that much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, there you go again. We're talking about actually somebody coming in without a tip and putting money into the into the community and you know it, it's like well we don't want that let's let's throw a roadblock up because let's try to get you know let's try to get some crap in yeah. here that especially a crap from a, a supporter yeah, there you go well stay thank angry you for the people. invitation stay and, angry and, and thanks look, for watching we'll monday see, we'll see you on monday be uh, careful we got a big story about you may be getting drugs made in China and India. Oh no. Have a good weekend.